Alrighty, what's happening guys? Welcome to the live stream where we're going to be going through some daily data as we normally do. Now, I have no idea whether or not this audio is going to be coming through. Okay, I'm looking over here. It looks okay. The mic is literally right up here. I'm testing out a new setup so I can ideally talk to you a little bit and then maybe write some code and then talk a little bit and then write some code. But uh, hola mi amigos, how you doing? Let's see how many people we got it on. Oh yeah, we're getting there. Okay, cool. Now, before we get way too far into it, I wanted to share something that I actually found out today, which was honestly like put the biggest smile on my face and it was all pretty much because of you guys. You guys got me there. So let's, um, let me jump over where I can share my screen. If you actually go through to the IBM website right now, Check out who is on there. Take a look at that, guys. This is all because of you. How cool is that? So your boy is right up there on the IBM Australia website or the IBM.com forward slash AU dash EN website. Literally all because of you guys. Honestly, I just wanted to say before we get into some techy stuff, I just wanted to say a massive thank you to all of you because it's you guys that made this happen. So, um, yeah. Honestly, from the bottom of my heart, it means the absolute world to me. My manager showed me this today. He's like, hey, Nick, you should go check out the IBM Australia website. You might get a pleasant surprise. And I was like, damn, from humble beginnings, just uh, making YouTube videos in my lounge room. I mean, I'm still in my lounge room right now, but uh, just wanted to say a uh, massive thank you. Um, all right, now let's take a look. So, getting a slide echo, okay. All right, are we going to be checking out Dali? Yeah, we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff today. So specifically, we've got three key tasks. I don't know if you've ever seen my rule of three. We're going to be doing three things as per usual. Now, the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be checking out Dali. Plus, keep in mind, I've also finished recording the entire Dali video in the background. It's literally uploading on the MacBook somewhere back over there. That's going to be up in, I don't know, as soon as I finish the thumbnail. We're going to check out Dali. We're also going to start taking a look at XGBoost documentation. So we took a look at a little bit of Kaggle stuff previously. So we're probably going to open up our Kaggle notebook again, which is somewhere here, Kaggle comp. I think I actually started doing a little bit of data viz with Seaborn. And that brings us to the, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one. And then the third thing that we're also going to be doing is we are going to be tidying up some data viz that I want to do with, um, what is it? that I want to do with the VIT model. So uh, this is the vision transformer model. Finally manage it to get it to work without getting those massive out of memory errors. So I'm going to show you that as well. And I want to get the full blown um, the plot that shows all of the little patches working. So we're going to give that a crack and see how we go. And again, I'm going to keep trying to refine these live streams this is probably like the second one that I've done in a very long time. The game plan is to try to make these better. I've been looking at um, the Coding Trains live streams and oh my God, they're absolutely amazing. I'm hoping that maybe we can get some sick animations or animation stings to flip between uh, slides and whatnot. But um, I'm seeing a lot of congrats. Honestly, I, I, I really do thank you. Um, it, it's, been, it's been a journey, but um, it's paying off, guys. And it, it really is because of you. Okay, Dali. So before, let's get into this bad boy. So... Again, I've got a whole entire video coming on this in literally, it's probably going to be out as like maybe 30 minutes after we finish the live stream, but let's take a look. So, all right, what I want you guys to do is in the chat, drop the prompts that you want me to try out. So I'm going to try out some of the ones that I want to try, but if you've got any specific prompts that you want me to try out, drop them in the chat. I'm watching it as we're speaking. So um, I can throw them on here live and we can see what these look like, but Take a look at the, the fa my absolute favorite one that I saw as I was doing this today was um, this ancient Egypt one. Let's, uh, I want to bring up the, the community tab. It, it looks so sick. I was like, we actually have, look at that thumbnail, but guys, I thought that like glow thing looked cool. It was just a Canva job, but um, all right, what was I going to show you? All right, take a look at this. So it's cyberpunk ancient Egypt type thing. Yeah, this. Muhammad Adele, you're a legend. This is this looked so cool. I don't know if you can see that. Let me zoom in. Yeah, you can see that. So ancient Egypt civilization drawn with a cyberpunk theme. 
this prompt made some cool, cool uh, images. All right, so this is Dali. If you haven't heard of Dali, Dali is a relatively new model that came out from the open AI team. And the game, the whole big thing about it is that you can plug in a description and it's going to generate images based on that. If I'm sounding a little bit nasally, I literally just got vaccinated because I'm going to be going to Korea soon. So bear with me if I do sound a little bit wrecked, but um, all right. So Dali, uh, now the cool thing is that it takes the, the text, converts it into an embedding, and then it produces an encoding and then a decode an encoding and then a decoding to be able to generate images based on images and text. So if you actually watch, I was watching um, the Assembly AI channel. There's a brilliant video on that. There's also a really good video on the Open AI channel. If you go to Dali 2 uh, and actually go to the Dali website, there's a really cool video that you can go and check out. But this is the type of stuff. And this isn't like screwing around, right? It is actually able to generate this as I saw today. All right, I kept you waiting long enough. Let's do this. So ancient Egypt civilization drawn with a cyberpunk theme. If we actually go and hit generate, take a look at this. So it takes a little while. I think it was like 20 to 30 seconds, but you can already get a feel for what it's generating. So this is what I was building up the uh, today. Gave my girlfriend a crack as well. And you can see there's some Paris ones. Any hints there, guys? Um, take a look at this. How awesome is this? Like literally, like, I don't know. I just find this absolutely fascinating. That is literally what it's generating. All right, well, we're starting to get some prompts. I'm going to run through those. Uh, but you can, like, it's it's crazy. The other ones that were awesome were um, the 3D renders. So, like, you could go um, a 3D render of Pingu. I don't know. I haven't tried this one, but it might be cool. Gotta stay hydrated, guys. Just got back from the gym. Take a look at that. How sick is this? Honestly, I just find this absolutely fascinating. It actually generates like slick looking 3D renders. Nuts, right? The other one that I was messing around with was um who who was it? So um Michael Jordan. I don't know if this will work because you're not meant to use celebrities. So when I did something You'll see it in the video anyway. So a little hook for you to go and watch it. But um, you, there's certain people that you shouldn't be used or you shouldn't be using celebrity names. So uh, let's actually not do it because I don't want to get banned. Uh, playing, uh, we'll try it. Screw it. Michael Jordan playing basketball on the moon. Take a look at this. Seriously, as if that, I mean, it's a little bit abstract. But as if that isn't awesome. He's even got like the abstract Jordans on. And uh, that looks like an old school Chicago Bulls jersey. Ah, oh, man. As if that's not sick. Almost looks like Drake there a little bit, let's be honest. Is that like a fighter jet in the background? But, oh, there's a basketball between the ring. Anyway, you sort of get the idea. But yeah, this is that like me messing around with MJ. All right, what do we got in the chat? All right, hyper realistic Metal Gear Rising Jet Stream Sam. All right, I don't know what that means, Power Cube, but I'm going to throw it in there. So hyper realistic. Let's go. But it also gives you these cool like samples like panda mad scientist mixing sparkling chemicals digital art digital art makes some awesome stuff as well there's your hyper realistic metal gear rising jet stream sam i don't know if that's what you're expecting but uh there you go i mean that like again you can keep generating what is it people vacuum cleaning a bread slice this is coming from bk201 what up let's do it Oh, this is the 3D render. Oh, you just saw it there. There you go. People vacuum. This actually looks legit. People vacuum cleaning a bread slice. There you go, guys. The image of your dreams. Take a look as if that is not slick. 
are there people using these for nfts it's probably against the terms of service but surely this seems like a thing that people would do i mean it's probably not cool but as if that's not awesome all right what else we got center of the earth i like that one ashley's dropping all paris you got to play with that all day center of the earth F1 car driving through fire, Frida Kahlo style. All right, we'll do that one. Spaghettification inside a black hole. This is great. Center of the earth. There you go. This is the earth Easter egg. This is very meta. Set. Nope. I mean, that's probably what it looks like if you tried to venture there yourself. I mean, not a great idea, but that, that one looks cool. I, it's very abstract. But like, it's the other thing, and I don't know if you guys know this, but a amazing feature about Dali, specifically Dali True, is that it's got this thing called in-painting. So you can actually scrub out a section of an image, which obviously has potential for misuse, but you can scrub out the section or a section of an image and it will actually go and replace it with something else. So let's say I got, um, let's go, uh, I'm trying to think of a good one. Like, you know, those G-Force seats, G-Force seat test pilot thing i don't know uh i can't remember what it's all right let's throw let's throw an image of a like cat in a fighter jet so what you can actually do is upload an image and then scrub out a section and have dali try to replace that right so i've uploaded that image i can hit edit image and then i can choose can you guys see that yeah, I can choose a region of this image to perform in painting on. So let me get rid of that. So it's, let's say I want to remove that or do an edit to this section. I can scrub that out and then go, um, a cat flying a fighter jet. Jet. And ideally it will try to in paint in that region. And you can see it's got context now. So it's, I've given it this image and it's going to try to do something with that well, image as context. Oh, damn, Piero, 2 a.m. Thanks so much for joining. Thanks, guys. I'm going to keep going with your ones. Take a look at that. Cat in a fight. Oh, all right, that one's the original. Cat in a fighter jet. Cat in a fighter jet. Cat in a fighter jet. It's a little sketchy there but you get the idea you can do this in painting um what's another one do, 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 do. give me some examples guys of what you'd like to do for in painting all right let's take a look at some others yeah power cube not exactly what i expected it to do a spaghettification in london in the style of bondi beach on christmas day you know what let's give it a crack because i haven't done a landscape one At this rate, we're just going to end up doing lots of Dali stuff instead of doing any actual coding. But uh, <laughs> we'll see. How cool is this one? An oil pan? Oh, just this bit. There you go. That's uh, London in Bondi style. Lonia Bozen. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's generate some additional ones. I think you can generate more variations of a particular one as well. What else we got here? Monkey driving a Tesla car. I like that one. All right, let's drop F1 car driving through fire free to color star. Y'all know I like F1. Hey, yo, that looks sick. I don't know. Does, is that really Frida Kahlo style? Let Frida Kahlo. I'm going to butcher the spelling of this. Oh, oh, no. Thank God for Google. Uh, that's Frida Kahlo, by the way. But uh, I don't know if you'd consider that a style. But I mean, it's still cool. It's generated an image of an F1 car. Could we do like an F1 car? One car racing at Silverstone. Silverstone.
So I know I wasn't meant to, but I literally played with this for like two hours while I was in Bali. I woke up, grabbed a coffee, and I was just like, yeah, this is awesome. It was meant to be Dali in Bali. Look at that. Fascinating. That's a masterpiece. I'd hang that on my wall. Anyway, that's, that's Dali, guys. Any last ones that we should... Uh... The beginning. I like it. Cat in a fighter jet. I really want to do monkey driving in Tesla car. Let's do that. Consciousness of Dali 2. So I actually did. I'm not going to do it here because hopefully you guys watch the video. Maybe you'll learn a little bit more. Uh, but I actually did Dali 2 driving by the bay. And I was like, hmm, this is how Dali interprets itself. But there you go. There's Monkey driving a Tesla car. All right. So clearly it's a toy Tesla car. What if we did hyper realistic? Hyper realistic. The ghost of a robot leaving its body after a big scare. I like it. Nice one, Mark. Kiara, because you are up here at 2 a.m., I'm going to do that one. Oh, there you go. This is more legit. <laughs> Little bit freaky. Just a tad. There you go. He's clearly Gene to be driving a Tesla. D do Teslas have a gear stick? I guess you'd have to have a selector of some sort. I don't know. I haven't clearly don't own a Tesla. Hey, yo. All right, this is awesome. All right, what was your one, Piero? Let's do this one. Michael Mida is petting a cat. Hypo, hippo crocoduck. I love it. Ask Dali to generate itself. Did this one work? No? Okay. Uh, you've reached a limit of 50 requests per 23. All right, clearly we've gone and hit the limit. So... We're probably going to need to go and uh, hit this up tomorrow. Yeah, I know. I know, Pierre. My bad. My bad. My bad. Maybe we'll do it in the next live stream. All right. Cool. But um, yeah, I, I went pretty hard in the video today. So that's uh, that's Dali done, at least for now. But again, if you want to see more of this, let me know. Maybe we'll do it a little bit more in the next live stream. What were we going to do now? So we wanted to do Kaggle Comp. All right. So I what was the focus again for the Kaggle thing? XG Boost. All right. So we are going to go and take a look at XG Boost documentation. And we are going to go and set this up. So I've just mean, been messing around. So I, I remember if you go and take a look at the first live stream, the biggest thing that I was trying to do was just get up to speed with how to work with the Kaggle SDK. So again, you remember, like, oh, I'm going to do my memory path without looking at the screen. So the first command is pip install dash q kaggle and a lot of you guys helped me out with working out what dash q was it's going to be a quiet install all right then the next thing that you need to do is run my eyes are closed i promise next thing that you need to do is run exclamation mark make the uh, squiggly line forward slash dot kaggle so that will create a directory for you to put your kaggle api key in then you grab your Kag kaggle a and this is literally what i do when i'm coding guys or like i mentally prepare and mentally practice the lines of code that i'm going to need to write all right, so we create, make the directory. We then upload the Kaggle.json file that we've downloaded from Kaggle. And then what we do is we use the copy command. So exclamation mark, cp Kaggle.json, squiggly bracket or squiggly line forward slash dot Kaggle forward slash Kaggle.json. So that copies the Kaggle.json file into that folder. And then we, so that should be that. And then we can run exclamation mark Kaggle datasets list. So that will list our datasets and we can download a dataset exclamation mark Kaggle competitions download dash c and then whatever the da data set name is then if we want to submit so it'll be kaggle exclamation mark kaggle competitions dash c whatever the name of the comp is so i think we're doing spaceship dash titanic dash f the name of our file name dash m the name of our message and to unzip our data set we can type in exclamation mark unzip whatever the file name is all right there you go yeah, I'm using my Sherlock Holmes mind palace. So, so that, that is literally how I learned how to code. Um, it's uh, literally how I practice every day. I've got like a giant one for deep learning as well. Like I could literally, so everything that you see, particularly when I'm doing like lightweight day, deep learning models, it's going to be, hold on, did I get this right? Make DRCP, CH mod. I always forget this one because I don't 
necessarily this is actually a security thing so you can definitely add this but um i got that i got that got that got that got that i think i got that as well all right cool we're good um all right uh some people miss the um you might just need to watch the live stream lily sorry my bad all right so we've gone and installed kaggle we're gonna make a directory i gotta go and get my kaggle api key again competitions so we can go to the kaggle website do we can go to account create a new api token so that's kaggle one i've got to just grab that through on my desktop and I'm just going to call it Kaggle. So when the Kaggle SDK loads, it's going to be looking for ca just Kaggle.json. Oh, I also linked where I actually went and learned how to actually do, um, how to learn this stuff in the previous thing. I wanted to give credit to where I learned it from. It's a big part of what I do. It's on there. So um, check that out. Should be Link should be in the description. All right, so that's my Kaggle API key. We can go and upload that, change our permissions. And then we can list our data sets. Cool. We can then go and download our data sets. Should bring in spaceship to Titanic. Refresh that. Cool. We got it there. Unzip. Boom. We got test and train. All right, cool. Then I started loading it up. I don't know if I showed this bit on live stream, but I was actually going through like a regular data science-y uh, workflow. And I don't actually, I don't think I've actually got much like pure data science stuff on the channel. I mean... You've got some absolute wizards out there doing data science stuff like Kenji, uh, data professor and whatnot. But I don't know if you want me to do more data science stuff, more than happy to. I've just been doing deep learning -y stuff. All right. So we're looking at the number of unique passenger IDs. So given the fact that they are, there's 8,693 unique values and there are in total 8,693 entries. I think I started actually setting up a pipeline to drop stuff that I don't need. So we don't need that because there's not going to be any relationships attached to it. We can keep it if we wanted to do something with it later on. Yeah, all the live streams go live straight after. I don't like I just throw them straight up unedited just so you can see what it's like doing this stuff. Um, but yeah, you can definitely watch the replay if you want. Uh, all right, so this command, I didn't show this previously. So, so DF, and then this is me just pulling stuff out of my random uh, data science memory palace thing. So df.homeplanet. So typically I'll go through each one of my variables. So this is clearly an object variable, so it's categorical. So we want to check whether or not we've got any null values because this is telling me, so the fact that I've got 8,492 non-null and in total we've got 8,693 entries, it means that we've got some missing values. Now, this is not a happy place for most machine learning models. I think XGBoost might be resilient to it. I, haven't, I can't remember. I've got to go double check. But we can double check and bring up those null lines, right? So if I type in df.homeplanet.isNull, this will first up allow us to see what's uh how many null values so df uh home planet actually it'll just give us the entire data set df home planet dot is this is too small isn't it and normally i code on 150 for you guys um df dot it's a little insider inside uh df dot home planet dot is null that'll give us uh whether or not a line is null and then we can bring back the whole data data set um i think we can type in dot sum as well to verify there you go so we've got 201 missing values so again, then we can bring up what lines are actually null. So if I go df, which is our data frame, so null. that's going to bring up all of the rows that have null values, which you can see there, so not a number. You can probably minimize that. So you can see those there. Then what we want to do, and we can obviously bring back the first five, and this is the target value, so transported or not transported. Presumably there was an accident that happened on the spaceship that meant that we, that only certain people got transported. All right, so dot head, dot tail. All yo. Um, okay. And then I started doing a little bit of data viz. So import Seaborn as SNS. I don't know. Do you guys use Seaborn? I typically like it because it just makes life a ton easier. Just makes prettier plots. Um, so import Seaborn as SNS from matplotlib import pyplot as PLT. And then with uh, Jupyter, sometimes you need to run a little bit of Jupyter magic, which is matplotlib inline to display our plots inline. And then plot.figure, we can set the size, plot.title, set the uh, 
that the title and then sns.countplot that allows us to do some plotting and then plot.show actually allows us to plot without um, that matplotlib wizardry. And I'll literally go through each and every variable when I'm doing this for realsies. Okay, so we can uh, get rid of putplot.show.back. All right, so and then what I'll normally do, and this is me just chatting about data science -y stuff, but I'll actually create a uh, like a preproc uh, function. And then what will come into here is the data frame. Da -da -da. And then that way, what we can do is we can pass through the train data, the test data, and actually uh, run it through. Seaborn is straight, so straightforward. I know, right? It's like a billion times easier. Uh, all right, cool. Let's take a look at our next variable. So cry asleep. So this looks like it is also categorical. So we can go and take a look at that. So df dot, what is it? Cry asleep. Uh, dot is null. Dot sum. So we've got 217. Remember the goal of this daily coding is just to write five lines of code a day. If, I don't know, maybe we should turn this into like one of those Twitter challenges or something, because it is literally the one thing that has made me a much better coder. I'm not saying I'm great, but it's definitely helped me out a ton. All right, so we've gone and seen how many null values we've got. So we can then go and take a look at what that looks like. And word, so cry asleep, so we've got a bunch of nans. So we, again, we're going to fill in our missing values. And normally I won't drop lines out of a data set until I've gone and built an initial model to begin with. So that's just, I don't know, it's just part of my process and how I've sort of learned. Like I'll go and, and just build a prototype model and get something out to begin with and then go from there. Um, so we're going to fill in, fill in the missing, uh, what is it? Cryo sleep. Is it cryo sleep? Cryo sleep. Cryo sleep variables. DF dot cryo. Did you also know that if you hit control plus spacebar on Colab, you get the, the code complete? It took me a while to work out how to get it done, but maybe I should do a video on like Colab shortcuts. That would, uh, honestly, it helped me. I was looking at like how to add a cell. So it's like, it's just a slight change, but if you, I think it's, Control M. Oh God, that's not, that's clearly not it. Control M A adds a cell. Control M D deletes a cell. Control M B adds a cell below. Control M M converts it into a text cell. Control M T converts it into, nope, that's not it. I've just gone and minimized a whole bunch of my windows. So I can't see you guys chatting to me. Control, uh, what is it? Is it M T? Control M T. MY. There you go. Control MY converts it back to into a code cell. Um, all right, cry asleep. Sorry, we got distracted there. Uh, so missing. I'm just going to fill these with missing to begin with. And okay, so uh, let's do a little data viz. All right, so let's, uh, all right, mental mind palace. So sns.countplot, and then we typically pass through the x variable, which is going to be cryo sleep. And then the data set df equals actually it should be data equals df that's our initial plot all right so we've either got false or true so it's a binary variable so we could probably one hot encode that uh, but we're gonna have a third value that's fine we'll make it mm, how many missing values do we have again df cryo they say matplotlib is better when you don't have a data frame yeah I, I agree. Average plotting fan versus average looking through every CSV line. Enjoy. I mean, Excel is great, right? Like, I mean, I still use Excel every single day without fail. You don't need to do everything in Python. Like, just use the tools that you have available to you. Whatever works is whatever works. Uh, and then we're going to sum. How many do we have? All right, 217. So, uh, yeah, we're going to leave those for now. All right, and again, you can tidy up these plots. So again, uh, what is it? So plot.title, plot.title. Let me zoom in out because now this is looking, wait, there we go. Plot.title, and then we can pass through the title. What are we going to call this? Uh, distribution of cryo sleep. 
for passengers. Uh, and then so plot.title and what are we doing? Uh, we want to change the size. So it's plot.figure fig size. And then we set that equal to whatever size we want. So 510 and then plot.show. And that is a terrible shape. So let's go. Uh, this should be 10 comma 5. Cool. Also, just fun fact. So this is something that I've got in the course, but just um, like my regular like sort of plotting or analysis that I go through in most data sets. So I'm trying to remember my memory path now. So for categorical variables, I'll typically look at the mode and count plot. And I've got a memory path for this. Do you guys want to learn memory paths or like the ones that I actually use? I don't know. Let me know. Uh, so categorical, numeric, uh, look at mean, median, and histogram when analyzing variables combined. So if you got numeric, numeric, I'll go, uh, what is it? Correlation plot and uh, scatter. Then if we've got, what is it? Categorical, categorical. You can use a pivot that looks good and pivots are like really common when you're in excel and what was the last one categorical numeric violin plot is great here violin plot anyway just a fun couple of notes all right so what have we done so we're taking a look at a distribution let's look at a uh and we've already gone and prepared to fill it in down there we haven't even let's actually go and install xg boost because i've been a little bit lazy um we haven't been lazy we just haven't done xg boost yet we're gonna get there somewhere all right so guys so whenever i'm get approaching a new library the first thing i do is go to the documentation and then i just look at an xg boost or a look at a tutorial so first things first work out how to install it should be relatively straightforward for we're gonna go back and probably do some more kaggly stuff but you, you get the deal is that a year to doing like memorization memory paths? Harry and Alicia? Let me know. All right, what are we doing? We are installing SGA Boost. So we can just go and grab that. And this is what I do for every single tutorial you see on the channel. I literally go to the documentation first up and then I will go and build from there. So we are going to create a new cell here and we are, all right, what's the shortcut for converting this to text? Control MM. Boom, got it. All right, and then we are going to say installing or setting up XG Boost. Up XG Boost. Okay, cool. All right, maybe I'll do some memory path stuff if you guys are keen for it. We'll do a poll. All right, so we're going to install XG Boost. Pip install XG Boost. Fingers crossed that works okay. All right, that looks like it's installed successfully. No issues there. What do we need to do next? All right, so getting, let's take a look at a tutorial. Introduction to Booster Trees. Yeah, cool. You should probably read this. I'm not going to read this. Uh, no, I just want a quick start. Hmm. Getting started with actually, ah, uh, here we go. Python. So what do we need to do? So we are creating Let's bring in data. We don't need that. We just need probably this and this. So these are our parameters. So it's just unpacking a dictionary, number of rounds. So we could effectively, so again, so like I just go and prototype. Constantine, yeah, this is a Kaggle comp. This is us just uh, doing a little bit of uh, magical wizardry. So we'd be going, I'm presuming it's import XG boost. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so model equals what? Like XG boost? XGB, yep. All right, so it looks like standard practice as XGB. Model equals XGB. And then we'd effectively, once we got our data set in a format that we like it, we'd run XGB.train. And then we'd, we would eventually run um, to prediction. So Y hat equals XGB dot what is it predict does it not use fit interesting uses train 
Oh, no, it does. So that's if we use the classifier. Here we go. Show me the Python doco. Cool, cool, cool. Load an numpy array. We're going to skip that. Training. XGB train. Hmm. XGB classifier. Nope. XGB classifier. Oh, this is with the scikit-learn interface. So we could actually do it with sklearn. What's happening here? So xgb.xgb classifier. What actually sits under that? Oh, okay. All right. So we've got XGB classifier model, which is probably like a, like a base class, ranker, regressor, classifier. Okay. All right, cool. So we've got some stuff that we can do here. All right. I don't want to go too deep into this because the stream has already gone for, I don't know, 36 minutes. Um, they were meant to be five minutes a day, guys, or five lines a day. But um, all right. That is the commencement of our XGBoost setup. So you sort of get the flow, right? So we're going to go and clean up this data over time probably going to be a long running stream theme clean up this data properly over time we're going to fill in our missing values and handle our missing values not necessarily just fill but we've got to go through the rest so there's missing values in all of these so maybe we'll impute the mean for age for room service food court so on and so forth for our categorical so it looks like we've got another categorical one there in vip we can just fill that one in name might be a We've got missing names. We could probably just drop that, to be honest. Once we go and take a look at whether at the relationship between name and transported, we'll do that a little bit later. Okay, cool. That is our Kaggle prep done. I don't know if we're going to have... What are we at? 36? Yeah, whatever. Let's go do it. All right, so we, uh, we've we gone and taken a look at Cat XG Boost. We're going to keep doing that tomorrow or in the next daily data live stream. I or what is a competition? All right, let's quickly take a look at the chat. Our cubed Aonic, do you remember me talking about the supervised learning dino game? Yeah, we did. I did. I Sweet. Smashed it, Power Cube. There is a Discord, Harry. Um, I've got a... Maybe I need to share a new link of the Discord in, in the comments. There are many competitions. Yeah, there's a ton of competitions on Kaggle. Why aren't we using sklearn? I think we probably will. I'm going to work out. I, again, I haven't looked at what the API is for sklearn into XGBoost, but I've got to double check what I did for the course, whether or not I just did it with the raw XGBoost API or I did it specifically with the sklearn interface. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, so this one is Space Titanic. So if anyone is just joining... The Kaggle comp that we're taking a look at right now is if you go, it's Spaceship Titanic or Titanic Spaceship. So if you go into competitions, you go into competitions, getting started. It's the first one, Spaceship. It's this one. So it's just like, it's a really good practice competition if you're just getting started and playing around with the Kaggle, which is something that I'm aiming to get back into because I haven't done it in quite a while. Um, there's also another competition platform and i, I want to double check with the guys that run it that it's okay to share it on the, the channel but they've got like some more hardcore machine learning deep learning type projects which is something that i'm super interested in but um i'll see if i can find that let's see if it's cool to share that but uh all right cool we're going to take a look at go back to our vits so i think i've already written five lines of code now anyway but uh let's quickly go through this I'll get the commencement of our subplots going. So over here is where I want to tidy this up. I also fixed up this model. You would have seen it on the community tab. I worked out what, where I was going wrong. So like the final performance, you can see we got it down to 0.98% accuracy on this particular model. And this is done using the transformer bit. Okay, so we're going to need some sort of subplot. So it'll be uh, fig bot. What do I normally call it? It's fig ax. Fig comma ax. And it's going to be plot dot subplots. And we need number of rows. I don't know. Let's set that to 100. 
number of columns set that equal to 100 and then I think you typically want some sort of iterator, but uh, let's just go for x in range len uh, res dot shape. Shape one. Uh, let's just have a look. Is that going to work? Should. So I'm just going through and what we're going to do is iterate out to be able to plot each one of these matplotlib subplots somebody actually shared some nice code on the channel before which would use like um what was it it was like a iter tools product thing i'm not going to finish this today i'm going to tidy it up but i wanted to write at least like three lines of code for x in range shape and then let's just print the x just to make sure that that looks cool be like 10,000. Nick, can you try some tutorial video on SpaceX docking simulator with kind of, yeah, cool. I don't know. I didn't even know that's a thing. I'll add it to my to-do list. This is taking a while. What's happening here? Uh, Hundred times a hundred should be ten thousand. We should be okay. Um, hold on. Let's just make sure we do our inline magic. Is it matplotlib inline matplot inline magic? Yeah, it's matplotlib inline. Just double checking. Or a scikit learn video would be nice to know something else than a wrong emoji location. Yeah, I think, I mean, if you guys are interested in me just doing more data science -y stuff, like I don't do this stuff typically on the channel because I figured people want more hardcore deep learning stuff. But if you want like some, me to get back into more just data science -y EDA type stuff, let me know. Like, I mean, just shout out. I'll, we can always get back into this. All right, what am I doing here? Hold on. Just do this bit and make sure that... Okay, there we go. All right, we're running. Okay, all right. So we've got the plot. We've got our subplots. We now need to plot in each one of these. So if I go and grab the last AX, we have... Nope, okay, because we haven't successfully gone and run that. So if I, let's just make it 10, 10 for now. Okay, so that is working successfully. All right, cool. And stop that. So what we're then going to do, if we go and take a look at AX, we should have a range of axes and the shape of this will determine how we can plot this out. All right, so 10, 10. So it's gonna be 10, what is it? It should be rows, then columns. So we need to plot out each one of the components in our patches. So if you go and take a look in the live stream, we took a little look at this particular function so tf.image.extract patches we're going to be finishing this off in the next video so effectively rather than just having plot.im show it would be let's actually just do 10 for now so i'm going to show you how to effectively what this is going to look like so if i go and ra do range 10 then we are going to be doing or swapping this out and i will be going ax x which is grabbing that iterator there and then we're plotting out the first 10 right now that's going to plot let me just go do uh x over here something like that that should work uh numpy and dra okay hold on it's because we've got two shapes so it should be x comma x something like that this is probably going to do a diagonal plot i think Okay, so you can see it's definitely plotting out parts of the image. That is obviously not what we want. 
we want to go and plot across but i could just do this for example i'm going to do column one, zero i think it should go across the top or uh, going across rows my bad all right so there you go so that's at least the beginnings but you can see that this is starting to print out parts the patches that we've actually extracted from our image got to tighten this up a little bit later but hopefully you guys have enjoyed this leonard i was able to get my first side gig and get it done with nicholas's capuchin tutorial I'm writing it oh man congratulations that is absolutely amazing awesome awesome work Anyway, guys, thank you so much. The mic is in the way. Thank you so much for tuning into the live stream. Hopefully you've enjoyed this daily data live stream. If you like it, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, it's been an awesome chatting to you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.